to 9,000. I mean, as you've just heard, that is something to behold, which leads us conveniently onto the topic of this video as to why I didn't opt for the manual gearbox in the GT3. Now, to set a little bit of context, let's uh, back it up a notch and explain some steps as to how I got to this point. Now then, late 2017, I got a very unexpected phone call, actually just before Christmas, from my Porsche dealer, saying that they had managed to secure one of the very last build slots on a Gen 2 991 GT3. I'd been on the list since I knew the car existed, I'd written the idea off because I just didn't think I was ever going to qualify for a slot, and lo and behold, as if Porsche Wimslow was Santa Claus themselves, they phoned up and said, we've got you a slot. And so here we are. This is the initial story as to how I managed to get into a Gen 2 a GT3. The thoughts and themes that ran through my head at that point was obviously how much content I'm going to be able to share with you guys from the journey of day one of that car, which of course is specking it. It's the, the colours, the seats, the stitching, and of course the gearbox. Now the surprise about the Gen 2 GT3 and the delight was that Porsche released the option of a manual gearbox. It was surprise and delight because from the Gen 1 991 GT3, which is the car that I had previously, that option was no more and it got many pants in many twists because everyone thought that the Gen 1 991 GT3 was going to be the last GT3 available with a manual gearbox and I agree with them it was somewhat of a travesty that that wonderful experience of a manual gearbox in a car so so special as this was now gone and then of course came along the 911R which got pants and even more twists because they were very limited edition and very invite only and then all of a sudden Porsche launched this car and lo and behold that little tick box became available again where you could tick a manual gearbox now since announcing this car and taking delivery of it one of the common reoccurring themes and questions in my comments both on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter etc was are you going for the manual gearbox well I don't need to delve into that anymore because quite clearly no I didn't and there was lots of people going why didn't you and I think rather than me just replying to the odd comment and going this is why I thought for every you know one person asking the question there's normally a few hundred more thinking it so I thought I would address it in a video instead. So here's the reason why. So for me, and I assume most people will agree with the sentiment of a manual gearbox in this day and age, because we obviously have more transmission options now than ever, the purpose of a manual gearbox now for me is further engagement with the car, right? So it's all about that extra level of connection and interaction that you can have with the car that a PDK arguably might not provide. And so what I mean by that is you are actuating the clutch yourself with your left leg, you're depressing the throttle pedal, you are manually changing down yourself, you are executing that seamless and beautifully rewarding heel and toe maneuver as you match the engine speed with the transmission speed for a seamless downshift or equally just a lovely punchy upshift. And all of these things, as I'm trying to convey with descriptive words, are all about connection and involvement with the drive. And I'm sure, by no exception, the manual gearbox in the Gen 2 991 GT3 would have been fabulous and provided all of those engagements and interactions. The main reason that I didn't go for a manual gearbox in this car is that I would have gone for a fundamentally different car entirely. And I'm sure you probably didn't see that reason coming, but if I was going for a manual GT3, I would opt for the 997 Gen 2 GT3 RS. The reason being, that was the sort of last of its kind. It was the shorter wheelbase, it didn't have the rear wheel steer, it was the last of the Metzger engine, and I had the honor and delight of sharing my good friend Sam Moore's Gen 2 997 GT3 RS on Gumball a few years ago. So we drove the best part of 3,000 miles in that car, and that for me was one of the best manual gearbox experiences that I have ever had. And these levels of connection and interaction, which is the argument for having a manual gearbox in the first place, is further heightened by taking just a generational step backwards 
just because it's retained some of that organic purity that, dare I say it, might have been lost in the surgical instrument in comparison that is the 991 generation. Now, this car as well was also designed and developed as a PDK variation from the get-go. It was always supposed to match and be designed for the twin clutch box. And so for me, this platform has evolved a step on from the 997 to lend itself to just being a more razor sharp edge tool, allowing you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do in the 997. And this is what I mean. Look how fast we're going through the gears. The way that this thing spools up, the way that this engine picks up and the way it shifts gear, for me, it's an entirely different style of reward, right? I mean, just watch this again, okay? Are you ready? Right, watch how quickly this hits nine. Are you ready? Nine. Nine. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to deal with that in a manual box. I think you would drive the car entirely differently. Don't get me wrong. It would be rewarding on the downshifts to match up and heel and toe. But honestly, when you're going really quickly in this car, particularly on track, and you really anchor on hard and you smash down through the gears, there's something about this gearbox. that is way more akin to a cup car than it is to a road car. It suits the engine and the character of the vehicle so beautifully, it just screams race car. So for me, it's a fundamental thing. It's, a, it's an actual platform-based decision. And because I plan on living with this car on a more daily basis, and I'm gonna be you know, cruising through town and things like that, also doing track days with it. It will be my daily driver, um, even though it's got a roll cage in it. I just think it adds to the sense of occasion in this car. I think uh, having spent time with the 997, that is a car that I would be inclined to bring out on a more occasional basis rather than a daily basis. You could, of course, absolutely daily that car. But, you know, this is the mod conversion. This is the very latest version of the GT3. And I think the PDK setup just suits the character of it wonderfully. So that's why. That is the main reason why. Now, on this very journey, we might, maybe not. Basically, I'm about to approach 1,000 miles in this car already. If you've been following the journey of this GT3, I took delivery of the car and drove it for the first time on the North Coast 500 in Scotland, and then swiftly after that took it to Silverstone for a track day, which is the video directly before this. Um, and in every eventuality, this gearbox has lent itself so beautifully to every scenario. You, you can just whack it into auto and chill, and that's fantastic when you're around town, or you just, you know, on a late drive home and just want to let the car get on with it, you can knock it back over into sport, PDK into sport, and when you're on the track, it's a razor sharp ninja. And other times, it's just sublime to be able to appreciate this audible tone chain of a gear shift. Sublime is not the word. So that's it. I didn't expect to take 10 minutes over explaining that. I was gonna go into a few more details about the future of this car. So while we're here, let's just cap off with a few things. Um, exhaust, now then. This thing, as I hope you can tell, even with the stock factory exhaust, is a step on from the Gen 1 car. Nevertheless, there is something about the, the downshift where, look, when I downshift now, it's still fairly tame. It's there, but you don't get the rasp rasp which you hear when the valves open like this. So I want an element of that, that like super howl when I downshift. So what that means is there's an exhaust coming. Um, in fact, when I say it's coming, it's been sat in my study for about three months now. So <laughs> more on that soon. It will be fitted with haste. And we've had one little extra detail, which I wanted to sort of put my personal stamp on 
this car because my last GT3 ultimately was a pre-owned car, so it was somebody else's spec. And what that means was there were some elements that I weren't quite able to spec to my exact tastes. But this car, I've taken it one extra, extra level and put the Mr. JWW stamp of approval on my own spec by having the JWW logo embroidered on the Alcantara armrest right here, which hopefully will feature in some shots as the life and journey of this car goes on. It should just be in the corner of some frames, which I think is just a nice touch to tie in all of this contrasting yellow stitching. As always, I want your comments. I want your feedback as to what you want to see going on with this car, what you want to know, what you want to learn, what you want to see in here. Leave it in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Get a load of this before we go. See you next time. Ciao! Woo! <laughs>